My name is Brian Keller. My degree is in biological oceanography. I got my master's at Coastal Carolina University, but I was doing my research in the Bahamas, and that was at the Bimini Biological Field Station. And one of the researchers that comes down there to teach is Dr. Dean Grubbs, who's my current advisor. Um, so I really started getting familiar with Dr. Grubbs there, and I learned that I really wanted to work with him. I think he's one of the best in the field, so that's why I came here to work with him. I'm working towards my PhD. I'll hopefully be finishing up in the next year or so. So I was doing an internship at the aquarium in Baltimore and my mentor, Alan Hennington, asked me, he was like, if you do research, do you want to be asking your own questions and doing research or you want to solely be helping other people out with their research? And I mean, I really enjoyed helping people out with their research, but I, I really liked the idea of being able to study questions that I came up with. That's sort of like one of the reasons I got into this is because I would, you know, be thinking about shark migration or, you know, the social behavior of sharks and I'd have these questions and you go and look them up and there's just no answers to them yet. Sharks are sort of hard to study, they're you know obviously misunderstood to some extent so pursuing a graduate degree allows me to sort of ask my own questions, go out get funding and study things that I'm really passionate about. One of the chapters of my dissertation is focusing on determining if bonnethead sharks use the Earth's magnetic field as a compass during navigation. Um, and we're using the bonnetheads because they're a really good model to study this. We know for a fact they go back to the exact same locations every year. So we know there's something in their head that tells them how to get from point A to point B. And we're trying to figure out if they use their magnetic field to do that. I contacted my current graduate advisor like five years ago about this project. So that's been sort of like the whole motivation is trying to answer that question. When you run current through frames like this that are wrapped in copper wire, a magnetic field is going to be created at the center of the system. Since we have horizontal and vertical frames, we're gonna have a unique 3D magnetic field at the center of our merit coil, right where our tank is situated. What I'm most proud of in graduate school, I've, wor I've worked really hard to get my funding. Um, so my dissertation was sort of independent of my advisors and it required a lot of tags. So to look at the migrations of sharks, we needed about 45 tags. Those cost like $300 each. We put out satellite tags, which are like $2,500 each. We put out 10 of those. The receivers to detect these sharks are like 1,500 and we have like 20 of those, so it really adds up. It's really been like a collective and group effort to get all this funding together for my dissertation and I'm proud that we were able to get it all together and achieve our research goals. So when I find myself in a tight spot, uh, you know, whether it be doing research or like writing, I usually try to think like what am I doing it for um, and in 10 years like I'm not going to be worried about that one night when I had to stay up late to work on a paper. Like it's all going to be worth it eventually and you just sort of have to like put your head down and work through it. A lot of people will tell you if you're pursuing a graduate degree or thinking about it like go for it, jump on in. Um, but I would make sure you really think about what you want to do as like a, a job path. There's plenty of jobs out there that you don't need a graduate degree for and it you know it might just be the wrong option so I'll just make sure before you know you go on you try to get an idea of what you're really getting into and how it's going to affect your career path or your goals in life.